My name is Kaoru. I'm 16 years old currently. Today I'd like to tell you guys about my childhood. When I was young, I lived with my mother, Mikiko. I grew up without a father and was never told why I didn't have one. I loved my mother as she was my only family member. I brought your favorite food today. Yay! My mother always smiled and kept reassuring me everything was going to be okay. You're such a nice girl. I'm proud to call you my daughter. Even though she had to work to make ends meet, she made sure to spend time with me. On the surface, it was a very standard family with a single mother. That wasn't the insane part. All right, I'm going to go out. Do you remember the promise? Yeah. Um, don't shout, don't leave, and don't answer the door. This was the three rules of the house. She even had two locks on the door to ensure I didn't leave. The lock needed keys to open either side, so I could not leave the house. I was locked in my house whenever my mom had to leave. But at the time, I didn't think this was weird. I just thought it was boring, and that's it. I still had my toys to play with, but I wasn't allowed to turn on the TV. Now that I think about it, all the things I owned were very worn out and old. I still dreamt of the outside world. But my mom would tell me, You can't go out. It's a scary place out there. I'm doing this for you. At the time, I didn't think much of it. The apartment was the only world I knew of, so I didn't realize that my life was out of the ordinary. This lifestyle continued for eight years. I was at the age of attending elementary school, but I had no idea what that was in the first place. I hadn't even met anyone other than my mom up to this point. But I had no way of knowing that my life wasn't normal. One day I said goodbyes to my mom like any ordinary day. But that day she didn't come home, no matter how long I waited. There were some days when she left for a while, but nothing to this extent. She didn't come back even though a week had passed. I ate up all the foods in the refrigerator and only had water to survive. That's when I decided to break one of the promises and open the veranda to see what was happening. I can't believe the outside is this beautiful! At first I was excited to see the outside world, but became more worried about my mom. Days have passed without food, which eventually led to me passing out on the floor. Uh, help me, Mom. When I opened my eyes, I was in a white room. At the time, I didn't know this was a hospital room, as I didn't even know what a hospital was. Apparently, no one was there to pay the rent after my mom went missing. That was when the landlord decided to knock on the door to no avail. I still heard the knocks, but I was still holding on to my mom's promises. After a while, the landlord decided to open the door through the master key, but couldn't due to the special locks installed in the room. The landlord decided to call the police to forcefully open the door, only to find me lying on the floor. After I woke up, I told the police what had happened. After I told them my story, their faces were usually met with shock. only knew that my name was Kaoru, and nothing else to connect me with my mother. That was the first time I realized I wasn't living an everyday life, and the police weren't able to find my mom.
After I recovered, I was taken to the orphanage. This new life had me shaken. All my life, I lived in isolation, so for me, living in a social space was too much. I became ill after a few days due to the stress I put on myself. I don't know anybody. I don't know what they're saying. Where's mommy? The people at the facility did their best to make me feel at home. But I couldn't feel comfortable around kids my age after what I endured. But thanks to the people at the orphanage, I recovered in six months. They taught me how to read and other basic knowledge needed to survive. I was still far off from attending school, but was better off than I previously was. I still needed to get used to having people around me. At the time, I was eight years old with the knowledge of a four-year-old. To help with this, the people in the facilities and volunteer teachers came by to teach me. One day, one of the staff members told me, There's someone that wants to meet you. Me? I was confused as my only relative was my abandoned mother. When I went to meet this person, it was someone that I'd never seen in my life. Sayori, it's really you! She ran towards me and hugged me as hard as possible. I had no idea what was going on. After crying for a bit, she looked at me and said, My name is Sana. I'm a 32-year-old housewife. Today I met my daughter for the first time in eight years. Let me tell you a story. It was around a decade ago. I was a member of the tennis circle at my university. In that circle, I met a guy named Masayomi. He was the center of all attention. He was the perfect guy, intelligent, handsome, and friendly. Back then, I had feelings for him, but I didn't know how to approach him myself. Hey, Santa! You coming to the party? Uh, of course. He often talked with me, which made me happy, but... Hey, you. I saw you talking with Masayomi. A, a little. What were you talking about? He wanted me to come to the party. I see. Don't take the message wrong, okay? What do you mean? Masayomi is nice to everyone, not just you. He doesn't care about you, okay? Uh, okay. Good. Try not to embarrass yourself at the party. You already know my relationship with him, right? Uh, yes. Her name is Makiko, and she was my senior at my university. Apparently, she was Masayomi's fiance. I didn't know those even existed. But I knew the two were born into wealthy families, so I guess they had their own situation. That's why no one would dare ask Masayomi out, even though they wanted to. Maybe if they were just dating, some would have at least attempted. But Makiko was very protective of him. If someone were to even dare talk to him... Uh, here, would you like a towel? Oh, that. Don't worry about it. Here, use mine. Oh, thanks. I didn't know how Masayomi felt about this. All I knew was that he would fake his laugh every time he was around Nikiko. Any girl that would dare to be near Masayomi would have to face the wrath of Nikiko and her entourage. So, like others, I kept my distance between Masayomi and me. Hey, Santa! Are you free? Uh, yeah. What's up? Are you free this weekend? 
I don't have any plans. Would you like to go out for dinner then? Just the two of us? Yeah. Is there something wrong? N no, it's just you already have Makiko and... Nah, don't worry about her. The fiancé thing is just something that our parents are saying. Oh, really? Of course! Arrange marriage at this time and age? That's too much. And I don't really like Makiko myself. <laughs> then it's a date. I accepted his invitation. It might have been a rash decision at the time, but it was my one and only chance to win over Masayomi. There was no way I could have said no to that. I thought it would be a quick date, but... Sana, do you have a second? What is it? My action was going to bite me back. Are you trying to take away my fiancé? I'm not trying to... Makiko came in with her entourage to scare me. I had no idea how she found out about my date with Masayomi. One of her friends had a metal bat to intimidate me. I was about to cry when suddenly... What are you doing?! M Masayomi! Masayomi came to rescue me. He then said to Makiko, I'm only gonna say this once. I have no intention of being with you! I already told both of our fathers about this. You and I are done! After hearing the news, her face turned red. Please wait! Why did you do this? Why would I want to spend the rest of my life with a lady that uses violence to intimidate others? From now on, please don't talk to me! He then took my hands and escorted me out of the park. This wasn't the end of the story. Afterwards, I discovered that Makiko's father's company went bankrupt also. After her entourage found out about this, they all left her. Eventually, it got to the point where she stopped coming to university out of embarrassment. She even dared to send me this message. How dare you! You destroyed my life! I feel bad for your family, but that had nothing to do with me. It's your fault! After you took my Masayomi, everything went bad! How dare you! What am I supposed to do? Bring back Masayomi. He's the only one for me. Masayomi isn't an object. You think you're better than me? It's not about who is better. Just watch. She was going crazy. Two years later, I was able to get married to Masayomi. We had a baby together and named her Sayori. Masayomi works hard for the family while I take care of our newborn. We didn't know what happened to Makiko. I heard her parents are living a peaceful life somewhere else, but I had no idea what happened to their daughter. With my life set in motion, I didn't have time to think about her anymore. But that would be my downfall. One day, I went to a shopping mall with my family. Sayori had just become one years old and was able to walk on her own. I took her to the mall to buy some groceries. There were a lot of other kids around the mall, so I was becoming more and more complacent. I left the area for a few seconds, only to find Sayori missing. Sayori? Where are you? Sayori! I immediately went to the police and told them what had happened. However, none of them were able to find her. That was when the guards showed me footage of Sayori being abducted by Makiko. The police immediately dispatched a search group, but to no avail. Time flew by, but no news. Seven years later, I was about to give up when I got a call from the police. They found Makiko and Sayori. I wanted to meet her as soon as possible, but the police in the facility told me that she would be beyond traumatized if I met her immediately.
She's my daughter. Why can't I meet her? Must be glad our daughter is alive. Let's wait a little bit longer. Masayomi was right. This was nothing compared to the despair of seven years. Six months later, I finally saw my daughter. That's right. The person I thought was my mother was just a kidnapper. And my time spent with her was in captivity. I didn't believe it at first, and I still had feelings for Makiko. Afterwards, I was taken to my birth parents' house. I was afraid at first, but they did their best to make me feel at home. They even showed me a photo of when I was just one years old. I knew immediately that they truly loved me from our little interaction. I am Sayori, not Kaoru. That's right, you are Sayori, our beloved daughter. I'm so sorry I couldn't protect you. From now on, there is nothing to worry about. Sayori, we love you. There is nothing in the world that would ever change that. I began crying after I felt an overwhelming amount of happiness. I was genuinely able to take back my real life. It took me seven years, but it was all worth it in the end. When I became 16, they told me about what had happened to me when I was young. They told me things that allowed me to finally understand what happened. That's why I requested to meet with Makiko, who was in jail. This was the first time I would meet with her in eight years. Although she looked much skinnier than I remember, it was still her. As I shed tears, I started asking her questions. Hey, why did you abandon me? I know you kidnapped me, but why did you stop taking care of me? At first, I thought you were cute. You were my Masayomi's daughter, after all. But as time passed, you started to become more like that girl. I couldn't take it anymore. That's why you let down your guard in public. Sometimes I have this dream. A dream where you took good care of me. For me, the time you spend taking care of me will never leave. That's why I want you to remember the moments too, so they will haunt you for the rest of your life. K Kaoru! My name is not Kaoru. It's Sayori. The Kaoru and the Masayomi you know do not exist. Goodbye. As I left the room, I heard her break down into tears. which made me shed a few tears myself. This was the last time I would meet her. Ten years have passed since then. I decided to write a book on my experiences, which became a massive worldwide hit. Now there's a documentary about me and a movie on the way. As for now, I currently work as a spokesperson to help other kidnappees and their parents cope with the trauma. I don't know what happened to Makiko since I last met her. And sometimes my trauma would come back whenever I saw a little girl. I guess no matter how hard I try, I can't deny the reality of the times I spent with her. I hope she'll think back on her actions and have them haunt herself too. And all the media coverage was my revenge plan against her.